Hello and welcome to this film about um, the effect of pressure changes on the equilibrium systems. This one um, deals with the principles, there'll be another one that deals with the graphs, um, but hopefully you've had a chance to look at um, the film that deals with the practical side of these things and you've seen some experiments that actually show these changes happening. Okay, um, We're only going to be looking at how uh, we can change the pressure by changing the size of the container just for now. Okay, We can change the pressure by adding um, other gases to a system as well, but that's for another film. So what we're going to try and do is we're going to understand the effect of changing pressure on an equilibrium system and we're going to try and include collision theory again in any explanations of rates. Okay, So um, let's start off by looking at how in general a system will change its own pressure. Okay, If I increase the pressure as we know, Richelieu's principle says that the system will try and lower it. Well, how can that happen? Okay, well, let's just uh, imagine this equilibrium system here. This one is the Harbour process. It's quite a handy one for this particular example because all these things are gases. Okay, so we're dealing with things that will exert a pressure inside a container. Let's just imagine a situation where we've got two nitrogen molecules, uh, sorry, one nitrogen molecule and the three hydrogen molecules that we need to react with it. Okay. Now, if the position of equilibrium was entirely to the left here, we'd have entirely reactants. Okay. If the position of equilibrium was entirely to the right, then we'd have um, entirely products. Okay. So we'd have all our reactants turned into ammonia. Okay. Now, although you can clearly see, and you can probably, um, you know, explain from first principles, there has to be the same number of atoms in these two boxes, but notice that the number of molecules has changed. There was four over here and there was two over here. So though the, there's the same number of atoms, in turning from this to this, if the size of the container hasn't changed, the pressure inside that container has dropped because we've got half the amount of gas there. Okay? So, in general, if we increase the pressure of an equilibrium system that's got gases in it, the way that the system will lower the pressure is by moving to the side of the equation that's got the fewest moles of gas. Okay. Likewise, if we reduce the pressure, and according to Le Chatelier's principle, the system wants to increase it, then the system will have to move to the side with the most moles of gas. What sometimes happens is that you get equilibrium systems with the same number of moles of gas on each side, and in those cases, pressure changes, that is, pressure changes caused by changing the size of the container, so we're either making the container bigger or smaller, pressure changes won't have any effect on the position of equilibrium in a system where there's the same number of moles of gas on each side. But if the number of moles of gas is different, then pressure changes will have an effect on where this equilibrium lies. Okay. So in other words, we'll, in this particular example, we'll increase the yield of ammonia or the position of equilibrium will move to the right if we increase the pressure because there are fewer moles of gas on the right. Okay, let's just have a quick look at what will happen to the rates of the reactions if we change the pressure. Remember, we are changing the size of the container here. Okay, so what will happen to the rate of the forward reaction if we increase the pressure? Well, there'll be a greater chance that two particles will collide with each other and react because there's more particles in a particular volume. So the forward reaction will increase in rate. What will happen to the backward reaction? Well, same thing. There's an increased number of particles per unit volume, so um, the chances of a collision increases, and so the reaction rate will increase. So that means both reaction rates have increased. Okay? So surely that means there won't be any effect on the position of equilibrium. But what will happen here is that the reaction rates of the two reactions, so that is the forward and the backward reaction, remember this is our forward one in general and this is our backward one, the changes in the rates will be different. Okay, So if we've increased the pressure, right, the system's trying to move to the right, so the forward rate increases by more than the backward rate. It's not that the backward rate slows down or doesn't change, they both speed up, but the forward one increases by more than the backward one. Similarly, if I lower the pressure, all rates that involve gases will fall. 
okay? Because there's fewer particles in a particular volume, and so less chances of a collision, and so the rate falls. That will happen to all reactions with gases in them, okay? But which rate will fall the most? Well, if the system is trying to increase its pressure because I've increased because I've decreased the pressure, I should say, sorry. So the system is trying to increase the pressure because I've decreased it. Well, it's got to go to the side with the fewest moles of gas. And in this case, but not in all cases, that means that the backward reaction has to be favoured. So the backward reaction will slow down less than the forward reaction, but they'll both slow down. Okay, so that's the principles of um, what happens when pressure changes are applied to systems. Um, it would be a good idea if you now go on and watch the film where we can show these changes happening on rate time and concentration time graphs.